Hello everyone and welcome back. Dom here with another video and today I'm going to show you something that has been requested a lot by quite a few of you. And this is how to set up your Modi X and your montage for work in a DAW. So how to integrate your Modi X and montage in a DAW, how to record MIDI, how to record audio. And there are quite a few ways to do this. I will show you how I do it and how I find it works great with my workflow and it gives me results super fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as I said, this is a question that I've been getting a lot. How do I configure my Modi X and my montage for use with my DAW? And the great thing is that the Modi X and the montage work great in a DAW environment. They have many features that allow you to incorporate these instruments into your workflow. So let me show you step by step how you can set it up, how you can set up your Modi X and the montage. The montage has a few more options when it comes to inputs and outputs, but basically the whole procedure is going to be the same for both Modi X and montage. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is go to Google and search for Modi X drivers. The first result is probably going to be the usayamaha.com website. So what you need to do over here is you need to make sure you download the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver for Mac or for Windows, depending on what system you're using. VST Connect, I totally recommend that you use that as well, especially if you want to recall your performances when you load a Cubase project. And of course, make sure that you have the latest update for your Modi X. So once you've downloaded these and installed these, the next thing is to use one single USB cable to the USB 2 host port into your Modi X and connect it to your computer. It can be Mac, it can be PC, and of course, as you know, you can use it on the iPad as well. I've already done a couple of videos for the iPad, so make sure you check them out. Now, once you do this, you have quite a few options. Of course, you need to use a DAW. Modi X and Montage come with Cubase AI, which is a more than capable DAW if you want to use it for music production. So this is for free and you can use it. And I recommend if you don't have any other DAW to give Cubase AI a try because it's really brilliant. But today I'm going to show you how to set up everything in Cubase because I know that if you have Modi X or the montage, you definitely have Cubase AI. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is run Cubase and then you need to go to Studio, Studio Setup, and now we need to configure some things. You only need to do this once most of the times. So these are set and forget settings. So let's try this. The first thing you need to make sure is that you go to VST Audio System and right here where it says as your driver, you select the Modi X. As you can see, you might have quite a few options right there like I do, but in this case, you need to select the Modi X driver. This means that now the Modi X communicates with Cubase as an audio interface. So not only transfers MIDI information when you play on the keys, but it also transfers audio, which is really, really cool. That's a really powerful function. When you click on the Modi X right here, you will see that you have a control panel. And here is where you can set up your latency. If you're familiar with audio interfaces and DAWs, you will probably know what that means already. But basically, the lowest the number here, the lower the latency that you have, especially when you play with software instruments. For example, if I want to play Retrolog on Cubase, when I play a key on my Modi X, the buffer size determines how fast this instrument will respond and how much of a delay I'm going to have to the sound. Of course, you would probably think that you would need to set this as low as possible, but the drawback is that you will put a lot of strain on your CPU, on your computer CPU, if you set a buffer size too low. So you have to find the sweet spot. In my case, I found that most of the times a buffer size of 192 or 128 is sufficient so I can play with no latency in a nice and snappy way. So the drivers are also very good. So you are probably going to get quite a nice latency even on 128. And that's it. Now you click OK. And now we've established the communication between the Modi X and our computer. Now, the next thing is you need to go to studio audio connections. And that's where we can start creating our inputs and outputs for our Modi X. And as you can see, most of the times when you launch Cubase, you will have, for example, a stereo in and a stereo out. If you're using Cubase Pro, you will also have a control room section, which I totally suggest you use. So you guys that already use it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm probably going to do a video on control room so that I can show you the benefits, but that only applies when you have Cubase Pro. So if you want to 
set up your Modi X with Cubase, we need to set up our inputs. So the Modi X has quite a few inputs, as you can see. So we have USB main left, right, and then we have one, two, three, four, eight more inputs to choose from. So it's a 10 in audio interface, which means I can record up to 10 mono sources straight from the instrument without any external cables. That's extremely cool. So let's say I want to have a stereo in, which is my USB main left and right, and maybe I want to add, let's say five more stereo inputs. So you go add input bus, add bus, and there we go. So as you can see now, I have USB 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this I don't need because it's a duplicate of this input, basically. So let's remove this. And now, basically, I set up all the inputs that the Modi X provides, which is very, very cool. Now, when it comes to outputs, well, the output is where you monitor when you listen to the output of your Modi X. Because the Modi X is not only going to play its internal sounds, it's going to play any sound that comes out of Cubase, like drums, loops, your click, all those things. And of course, you can control this using the USB volume monitor knob right here. So if you're not using control room, you want to set your outputs right here. So you need to set Modi X and make sure that you have left and right set right here. In my case, I'm using control room, so I'm going to leave this to not connected. And in control room, I'm selecting the main left and right of my Modi X into a monitor bus. And that's it. Now we're ready to go. Now we can start setting up a project in Cubase and basically start creating music. So all you need to do is go file, new project, and then click just on an empty one. I'm going to show you how you can start creating a project from scratch. And then of course, if you want, you can set up a template where you can just load it and everything is ready for you. So you're ready to go. So I'm going to name this Modi X DAW. And let's hit create. And that's it. Now we have an empty Cubase project. So I'm going to give you now some information on how to set up your Modi X so that it works flawlessly in Cubase. There are a few ways to set it up. I'm going to show you how I do it, how it works on my workflow, okay? So the first thing you need to do is go utility and let's take the pages step by step. On the sound page, you don't need to do anything. On quick setup, this is a very quick way of configuring your Modi X or your montage for work with a DAW. And it's great that you have it because you can set it. You can say, I want to record MIDI on DAW. I also want to record the output of the arpeggios to my DAW and all those things. And I want to record audio to my DAW. So I'm going to skip that for now because this is basically a set of settings that you can configure anyway. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So audio IO, you need to make sure that this is the page that you see right here. There's not much to do. Most likely you will have this page like this. And then that's where we want to go first, MIDI IO. So number one, you need to make sure that your MIDI in out is set to USB. That's very important because you need to make sure that all the MIDI goes through that USB cable and not through the MIDI cables of the Modi X. Then the other very important thing is that your local control should be set to off so that when you play something on the Modi X, you don't hear the sound that's been sent out of Cubase through MIDI and of course the keyboard because you will get like twice the sound. You will get duplicate notes which doesn't sound very good and they sound weird. So you make sure that local control is off. So when you play on your Modi X and you don't have a MIDI channel armed in Cubase, you're not going to hear anything, which is how it should work. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure, this, everything else, you can leave it as it is. And then you need to go to advanced and make sure that your MIDI IO mode is set to multi. Why? Because we want every part of our performance, like this, as you can see right here, to have its own discrete MIDI channel. So part number one, I want it to be on channel one, part number two on channel two, three on three, four on four, and so on and so forth. So it's really important that you do this. So... Right now we've done this. The other thing that you need to do is make sure that your keyboard control buttons are off or for every sound, okay? So make sure that these are off and that's it. Now you can basically start recording in Cubase and creating songs. So let me show you how you do this. The first thing you need to do is create a MIDI channel in Cubase, okay? See, so when you click on this plus symbol right here, you get this dialogue. 
or the other way you can do it is just right click and say add MIDI track. And basically what you want to do is create as many MIDI parts as the parts you're planning to use. In this case, I have 11 parts, okay? And I'm planning actually to use basically just, I don't know, four or five. I just want to demonstrate this for you because the whole philosophy is the same. So let's say I'm going to create like six MIDI parts and let's call them Modi X. And that's it. Now I have six MIDI parts. Now, normally, if you only have your Modi X connected, everything should be ready to go. But I'm going to show you how you can double check that everything will work. So let's go to Modi X channel one. And as you can see, I have set this to all MIDI inputs and output is my Modi X port one. And my channel is channel one, which means that when I play this sound, the first part is going to play. Okay, so now let's go to channel two. As you can see, this is routed to channel two. And of course, it also goes to Modi export one. And now if I play this sound, okay, so let's say I go to channel four. So let's say I also want to play, for example, let's say I change my mind and I want on part number three to actually play channel seven. So my part seven, I can just change this channel number and then I can play part seven. Now, if at any point you don't hear any sound, just make sure that instead of selecting this performance right here, see, you select one of the parts doesn't matter which one you select because Cubase determines what part plays at any time. And of course, that means that you can play multiple parts at once. If I want, for example, I can say I want to select this and this one and this one and play all three of them. So it's very flexible. You can do so many things with it and it's very easy to play stacks of sounds, you know, like layered sounds. This is really, really cool. So I'm going to show you how I can start creating a very, very quick track. I'm going to set up a four bar loop like this. And I'm going to set my cycle to on and I'm going to now start recording. And while I'm recording, I'm going to change the channel so I can move on to the next sound. Okay, so now let's record the drums. Now let's move on to the bass. I'm just clicking on it and I can start recording. Now let's record this sound. So now let's say I want to change this part. I can just delete this and I can start recording again. So just like that, I record a very, very quick loop. Now let's say I want to mix this. I can just go back. And of course, I can go to my mixing page into my Modi X and start mixing the sounds. Let's do this.
and I can add reverb. And of course I can solo the sounds. So just like that, I've recorded all this great MIDI information and now I can play it back. I can of course go and edit it here and it's very easy to edit. Uh, it's always way, way simpler than a hardware sequencer. It's very easy, very quick to make changes. I can immediately have feedback and all these things. Now, the big power of the Modi X and the montage comes to this. Now I can say I want to record all these channels in separate audio channels. So basically I can start mixing them, I can start manipulating the audio and all these things. So let me show you how you do this. I'm going to go to the plus symbol right here and add an audio channel now. As you can see, the stereo ins that we created before, I can start adding channels like this. And I can say, okay, I want a stereo in, a stereo out. And now I can say Modi X audio. And now how many tracks do I, did I use? I used one, two, three, four, five. And my inputs for the Modi X are going to be enough to record those channels in one go. So let's create five audio channels like this. And we're good. Now what I can do is I can set each of the audio channels to received audio from a different input of the Modi X. So let's try that. Let's say my first channel is going to be my drums and I want them to go to stereo in. My second channel, I want it to receive audio from stereo in two. My third channel, three. My fourth, four and five. So that's great. But now here comes the clever bit, check it out. If I go and record on channel one right now, let's start recording. So I hit record. So as you can see, let's solo this track. It recorded everything that the Modi X was playing, all the parts, right? So this might be useful if you want to do like a quick uh, mix down or if you're recording the sounds one by one. But what if you want to record every sound in its own separate channels? And now I'll show you how you can do this. So the trick is to go to your sounds. Let's select part one right here and go edits. And now we can route every sound to its own output. So my drums are going to be on main left and right. My bass is going to be on USB one and two. Three, I didn't use channel three. Number four are going to be to my USB three and four. Five is going to be my five and six. And I also use seven, which was my guitar. It goes to seven and eight. So now if I record all of these, let's see what happens. And as you can see in one go, in one click, I recorded all these channels in separate audio channels. So let's go to my drums. And of course, now I can completely change the audio. I can, for example, reverse it. So there you go, guys. That's my workflow when I want to use the Modi X and the montage in a DAW scenario. I think it opens a whole new world of possibilities. And of course, you take full advantage of the audio interface function of these instruments. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with anyone that you feel that might benefit from it. And of course, until next time, have fun and make great music.